We're now on to our lesson for geometric series. But before we begin, let's just take a quick little recap on what we've learned so far in this unit on sequences and series. We started by realizing what an explicit formula was. And remember, an explicit formula is just one where any term in that sequence can be determined relative to its term number. So if I know what the I know I'm looking for the 20th term in a sequence, I can use an explicit formula. Whereas a recursive formula was a formula where each term in the sequence was determined based on the previous or the two previous terms within that sequence. We then talked about arithmetic and geometric sequences and we developed explicit formulas for their general terms. And then in the last lesson we uh, found out what a series was and then we defined the arithmetic series, which is just a sum of the first n numbers in an arithmetic sequence. And there's two different formulas we had for that. One where we knew what the last term was, and one where we didn't know what the last term was, or we weren't given what it was. So for today's lesson, we're going to look at geometric series. So just like the arithmetic series, a geometric series is just the sum of the first n terms of a geometric sequence. Now deriving the formula for this geometric series is a little bit trickier. We use sort of a little math trick in there to figure it out. So if you were just trying to figure it out on your own at home, you might find it a little bit tough. But I'm going to show you quickly how we come up with it. So firstly I'm going to write down what the sum of a geometric series would look like. We still use the notation S sub n. And a geometric series always starts with its first term, so a. We'll then have to add the next term in the sequence. Now the next term is derived from the first term multiplied by the common ratio, which is r. So a plus and now a times r. The next term in the series will just be the term before it, but multiplied by another common ratio, so another r. So this would be a times r squared. And this would continue all the way until the very end of the series, where the last two terms would be a times r to the n minus 2, and we wrap up with a times r to the n minus 1. Now to derive a formula for this sum of the series, we're going to use a little bit of a trick, and here's the trick. I'm going to take this exact line right here, but I'm going to multiply the entire thing by an r. And remember, r is just the common ratio. So if I take each term here and multiply it by r, the a becomes a times r. The a r term becomes a times r squared the ar squared term becomes ar cubed, and, and so on. And so what we end up with, here we got a times r to the n minus 1, and then lastly a times r to the exponent n. And so that's what we end up with. Now what happens now when I subtract the second, uh, the second equation here from the first, or Subtract the first from the second, I guess. Well, on the left side, I have r s n subtract s n. And then on the right side, something interesting happens. Because all of these terms are adding each other and then subtracting each other, remember, we can do adding and subtracting in whatever order. So this a r term would eventually subtract with this ar term and essentially they could cancel each other out. This ar squared term could cancel itself out with the ar squared term down here after they subtract and this would continue on down the line so the ar cubed would subtract with the ar cubed that would be the next term here. This ar n minus 2 would cancel with the ar to the exponent n minus 2 that would be right there and this ar to the exponent n minus 1 cancels with this one. And so what are we left over with? Well, I'm left with a r to the exponent n subtract this lowly a that was left over at the beginning. Now I'm going to factor both sides. 
So on the left side, I have an Sn in both of these terms. So I'm going to factor that out. And what I'm left with is R from the first term and just 1 left over from the second term. On the right side, I'm going to factor out the A and I'm left over with R to the exponent N from the first term, but then just 1 from the second term. And because I want a formula for Sn, I'm going to get Sn by itself. So I'm going to divide both sides by R minus 1. And I'm left over with Sn equals A times R to the exponent N minus 1 divided by R minus 1. And that is the formula for the sum of a geometric series. Now, the one restriction that we have to notice here is that R can't equal 1. And this is simply because the denominator can't ever equal 0, or else we'll get an undefined answer. So uh, the only case where R would ever equal 1 is if we have a series of the exact same number being added together. So this won't work for that. But any other R value as well. The other thing we need to be careful of is that we for sure have a geometric series before we start using this formula. If it's arithmetic, we need to use the arithmetic series formula we learned in the previous lesson. Okay, so let's learn use this formula that we just learned here in some examples. Example 1. Determine the sum of the first 10 terms of the geometric series where a equals 5 and r equals 4. All right, let's start by writing out what this series would look like. So I would have the sum of the first 10 terms. So S10 would equal. And my first term there is 5. And my R, my common ratio, is 4. So the next term would be 5 times 4, which is equal to 20. The next would be 20 times 4, which is equal to 80. And then 80 times 4, which is equal to 320, and so on and so forth. Okay, This would keep going uh, for 10 terms. Uh, we don't know what that tenth term is, though. So whatever that is. So uh, we're going to need to use the equation, then, that gives us, we have ten terms here. So Sn, remember, is equal to A times R to the exponent N minus 1, all divided by R minus 1. Our n is 10, our a value is 5, sorry, the n value is 10, the r value is 4, so 4 to the exponent 10, subtract 1, and then divide by r, which is 4, minus 1. So we know that 4 minus 1 will be 3. Well, if you're calculating this out, I would suggest starting with whatever's in the bracket. So start with this power using the big exponent here. So 4 to the exponent 10, then subtract 1. We get the number 1,048,575. Big number. So 1,048,575 and then all divided by 3. And uh, if you can do this in your head, do it, but you probably can't. I can't. So multiply by 5, then divide by 3. We end up with a grand total of 1,747,625. That's a pretty big number. Really hard to do in your head. But with this sum of a series formula, very easy to calculate. All right, here are two final examples. Determine the sum of each of these geometric series. So see what we're given here. We're given the first three terms in each of these series and the last term. But we aren't told how many terms are in each of these series. So that's something we're going to need to figure out first before we can plug them into the formula. So again, I'll, we'll start with A. 
So a is going to be equal to 32. My r value, well, if I look from one term to the next, what do I multiply to get from one to the next? I know that they're uh, dividing themselves in half. So that means I have to multiply by one half. But we don't know what where one eighth falls in this series. So let's solve for that first. We're going to need, need to bring out our arith, uh, sorry, geometric sequence formula. Tn equals a times r to the n minus 1. We know that the nth term is 1 eighth. We know the a value is 32. And we know the r value is 1 half. What we don't know is the n. Now in grade 12 advanced functions, you're going to learn how to solve for an exponent uh, where the variable is in the exponent. But for grade 11, we're just going to have to use guess and check. And to help us out, we're going to first isolate for this power where the variable is in that exponent. So let's get rid of this 32. So to get rid of it, I have to divide both sides by 32. So 1 eighth divided by 32 is the same as 1 eighth times 1 over 32. And 1 eighth times 1 over 32 is 1 over 256. This will equal the 1 half to the exponent n minus 1. So we have to figure out what exponent do we need to put this to so that we end up with 1 over 256. Essentially, we need to ask ourselves, 2 to the exponent what equals 256? Well, I know that 2 to the exponent 5 is 32. That's the one I always remember. Which means 2 to the exponent 6 is 64. 2 to the exponent 7 is 128. And 2 to the exponent 8 is 256. So this would mean that 1 over 256 is the same as writing 1 half to the exponent 8. And before you rush to judge that n therefore has to equal 8, just be careful because this exponent is n minus 1. So in order for this to equal 8, n has to be 9. We're not done yet. Remember, now we need to find the sum of this series of 9 numbers. So the sum of the first 9 numbers in this series equals a times r to the exponent n minus 1 divided by r minus 1. So a is 32, r was 1 half, n is 9, subtract 1, and then all divided by 1 half minus 1. A common mistake that I see here is people put this r to the exponent n minus 1, they put the exponent as n minus 1. So they would take 1 half to the exponent 8. And sometimes on your calculator, this could happen too. If you put 1 half and then put the exponent button 9 minus 1, it might think that you're taking it to the exponent 8. So be very careful when you're dealing with type questions like these. I suggest just doing 1 half to the exponent 9, hit equals, and then just subtract 1. Hit equals again, then multiply it by 32, and then divide by negative half. It could still end up working out the, to be the correct answer if you put it all in at once, but just to be sure, that's what I would do. So when I plug all of these things in, I end up with 63.875. Now, because my original question uh, was given to me with fractions instead of decimals, it could have been written uh, 0 0.125 instead of 1 eighth, I should probably write my final sum as a fraction as well. So luckily my calculator has an option for me to change this to uh, a fraction. So 63.875 as a fraction is just equal to 511 over 8. On to example B. How about you try this for yourself? Pause the video, see what you come up with as the sum of this series, and then just press play again to see if you were right.
we start with our a value equaling 1 and our r value equaling negative 3. Again, we don't know what this last term is, so let's use our uh, tn equals a times r to the n minus 1 formula. We know it's negative 243 equals a, which is just equal to 1, so I don't need to write it, times negative 3 to the exponent n minus 1. If you don't write this negative 3 in brackets, technically you're not saying the correct thing. There is a proper form element here, because the negative is also being taken to that exponent n minus 1. So what exponent would this need to be at to equal negative 243? Well, I can, I'll use guess and check again. I know for sure the exponent has to be an odd numbered exponent, so that the final answer is still negative. And my first guess here is going to be 5. It turns out that I'm right. So for this case, negative 3 to the exponent 5 equals negative 243, which means n therefore has to equal 6. So I'm looking for the sum of the first six terms, which is going to equal a, which is just 1, so I don't need to write it, times r to the exponent n, so negative 3 to the exponent 6, minus 1, and then all divided by r, which is negative 3, and then minus 1. Plug all of that stuff in, and we end up with negative 182. It's kind of neat how the sum of this series, negative 182, is a number that is, uh, I guess, greater than the last term, negative 243. But that's because this series flip-flops between positive and negative, positive and negative. So it kind of does make sense. And there you have it. You've now seen arithmetic and geometric sequences and series. All you need to do now is make sure you understand uh, and are able to differentiate between what question is a sequence question, what question is a series question. Is it arithmetic or is it geometric? And then you need to remember all four of the different formulas that we've learned. So good luck with that. Remember, the enrichment questions on your unit outline are the ones that are bolded, so try those if you feel that the questions in your homework are just too simple. Good luck. Mm -hmm.